Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, and welcome to the 28th Annual Hispanic Marketing Conference and Awards. I'm Rick Aguilar with Aguilar Productions. And uh, how do you like our new venue? So we're here at SPNN. Some people went to the neighborhood house. Uh, we, we were at the neighborhood house over on the west side. But this is a, a new venue for us. Uh, we work a lot with SPNN. They're an outstanding organization. And by the way, our, our programming here is seen over 100 times during the year. I remember. So it's a win-win for everybody supporting a, a community organization and working with Steve Brunsberg and his people. So let's give them a hand for, this, for setting up this beautiful venue here. Thank you. Well, being uh, 28 years, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. And, and we've done it because we always have great presenters. We always present new strategies and insights. And that's what's kept us at top. We've lost a lot of our counterparts over the years. I call them counter, uh, counterparts, not, not competitors. People that were doing these, these uh, conferences around the country. And, and quite frankly, they didn't keep up with the new ideas and the strategies. And that's where we, I think we've been on top. And that's because of the audience we have. These are interested marketers wanting to learn new ways to, to reach our Latino community here. And uh, it's, a good, it's a good community to reach because it's growing every year. We're gonna see some numbers here that you won't believe in, in the next decade. And these are entrepreneurs, these are hardworking people, these are taxpayers, these are people who are gonna buy your goods and services. So we're always happy to be here, but we also have to look at the national scene. But I wanna first start off by thanking our sponsors. Uh, U.S. Bank was one of our first uh, corporations that responded to uh, coming to our conference 28 years ago. And when I met their executives there, they said we're interested, and they were serious. Within two or three years, we got them an agency of record, and now they've been involved in Hispanic marketing, multicultural marketing, and they've been a sponsor of ours for that many years. Let's have a hand for U.S. Bank. Yeah, an, an, ama an amazing sponsor. Thank you, U.S. Bank. And then Comcast. Uh, Comcast, uh, we got involved with their Internet Essentials program. This amazing program of bringing Internet to the low-income communities. Very important work. And uh, I, I just love working with, with, with uh, Stacy, uh, Sasha, and all the crew. And now we have their, the ERG here. The Unidos, right? Latino Unidos here from Comcast. How about a hand from Comcast, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. So we have uh, our, our community partners. We have NAREP. NAREP, is, that's our Latino real estate professionals. How about a hand for NAREP, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Thank you, NAREP. Thanks for being here. And uh, last but not least, Latino American today. I happen to know the founder and the owner, Rick Aguilar. He's a good guy. Uh, doesn't pay enough, but, but, he, but uh, Latino American today, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we have a real busy show uh, today. Uh, we're, we've uh, changed our, our venue times. We're, we're here, we want to get out here by 12.30. I don't realize everybody's uh, busy, so we really appreciate you being here. So we're going to have a little tighter program, uh, hence we took our photos and got a lot of that out of the way. So we're going to start uh, our program, and uh, I'll start this way. We, we, always, we always hear, uh, this person needs no introduction. You know, you hear that sometimes. And, show business, but when it comes to this conference, Rico Vallejos needs no introduction. He's been a part of our show uh, since we started. He was at our first conference uh, 28 years ago. We still look good, brother, by the way. We're in high school, by the way. Yeah, we're in high school. And, um, and uh, we've been, he's been a collaborator since. And uh, so it's always a pleasure to have Rico here. And he's another uh, experienced professional who always has new information and insights. So we're going to start off with Rico. Thank you, Rick. I'm very excited about this presentation. This is a controversial issue, which I love, because Spanglish is defined in many different ways by different people. Basic things about Spanglish. It's not new, and it's not unique. Blended languages or hybrid languages existed 
for a long time, all over the world, you have languages like Franglais and, uh, and uh, you know, Franglish, I guess some people call it, Portuñol. Franglais, of course, French and English. Portuñol, Spanish and Portuguese. Chinglish, English and Chinese. If you, Monglish in St. Paul, I'm here in St. Paul, there many people speak Monglish. And uh, by the way, this is a podcast, it's a chef, it's a great one, I recommend it. And then you have Yiddish, Ladino, Yiddish is Hebrew and German. Ladino is Spanish and Hebrew. Jopará in Asunción, Paraguay, is a combination of Spanish and Guarani, which is one of the original, the official languages in Paraguay. A lot of these blended languages happen for too many re two different reasons, primarily, and I'll go into that. Let's talk about Spanglish a little bit. A Puerto Rican came up with the, the name Spanglish, the word. He just coined, he gave name to something that existed for a long time. And he actually studied it and understood it. We'll get into Puerto Rican Spanish. And here are the two main reasons for hybrid languages or blended languages. One is to show culture. The definition of language, by the way, in cultural anthropology, we define language as the way in which culture is communicated. That's the way you define language. Another reason for hybrid languages is just utilitarian, communication, let's communicate. So for example, when somebody from France goes to England, they speak a little English, not too much. They go to England, talk to people who don't speak French, they do their best to speak in English and they throw one or few words in French here and there to try to communicate. What comes out is franglais, due to a lack of fluency in one language. That is part of it. And Chinglish happens that way too. In California, a lot of people speak Chinglish with their grandparents. They're primarily English. They know enough Chinese to talk to grandparents, but not 100% Chinese. They pepper their language with a lot of English. Same thing with Chinglish. Same thing with Spanglish. So some people speak Spanglish because they are fluent in one or the other and not so fluent on the other language. And so kind of you do that. That kind of communication is uh, utilitarian use of a hybrid language is part of what we see in Gen Z. All of this is about Spanglish and Gen Z, Generation Z, or also known as Generation Z. There is a great article in the last week in The Economist out of the UK, and they talk about Generation Z around the world. It's a big thing now. It's a huge generation, very important for many reasons including for marketing, and that's what we're focusing on right now. Marketing, targeting marketing, segmentation marketing, Gen Zers in, uh, in the US especially. So this is something from Pew Research. Pew Research tells us over all Hispanics, once you go down in generations to millennials, a little lower to Gen Zers, it gets a lot more people, and we'll see that because the research we're doing. Before I move on too much with generational marketing, these are just, you don't have to read all of it, take a photo of it or watch the video. I want to focus on number four a little bit, the class issue. The class issue is a big thing when it comes to Spanglish and Gen Z. So keep that in mind. But those are five warnings, five words of warning or ideas that Pew Research has about generational marketing. Yeah, you can use it, but be careful. And they actually say, oh, there are a lot of gurus, a lot of people in marketing who make a career out of teaching people how to reach millennials. 10 years ago, I was working for, with clients reaching millennials. Everybody wanted to get a piece of their millennial budget. They're getting older now, and we have Gen Z. A generation, by the way, is uh, uh, 15 to 18 years. That's kind of the way uh, demographers talk about generations. So Gen Z today is roughly late teens, 20s, early 30s. We are going to use some great materials. By the way, this is, look at these numbers. Millennials, 72 million, boomers, 70, Gen Z, 68. It won't be long. Well, it'll take some time. I don't want to be too macabre, but there'll be more Gen Zers than boomers for natural causes <laughs> reasons. That's the reality of things. And uh, our friend, 
are somebody who presented at this conference, Dr. Jake Benifla. He was here a couple of years ago. He, in the Journal of Marketing Research Strategy, Marketing Strategy, he just did a study with some colleagues. He led a study on millennials and Spanglish, the Spanglish language, the use of the Spanglish language. Thank you, Jake, if you're watching this. Hola, Dr. Jake. He did a great job. This is very recent. And he actually went to talk to Latinos, Latinas, Gen Zers, and for marketing, this is great for marketing because he focused on ages 18 to 34. That was great. That was, that's the sweet spot in terms of segmentation marketing that most co companies do. And this is one finding that they have. Gen, D, Gen Z Hispanics are predominantly bilingual and bicultural. And that's what is required, really, ideally, you're both bilingual and bicultural to be able to speak Spanglish, to be able to naturally have Spanglish flow out of you. And uh, let's look at a couple of charts here. This is Spanglish usage. Most people, sorry, that those, those levels are very little. We have social, home, work, usual, use of Spanglish in various domains in life. Most his, my, millennials, or mo, most uh, Gen Zers, Latino Gen Zers, use Spanglish a lot. More than half use it on many domains. When you look at one of the last domains is co-workers and grandparents. Well, that's why, that's because most of many, many Gen Zers with co-workers, they speak English. With grandparents, they speak Spanish. So it's less Spanglish. And then teachers, of course. You know, they would say things like, por favor, don't flank me. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Cultural identity. This is really a huge part of the research and the, the, the findings of this research. Spanglish is a vehicle for cultural expression. You communicate your culture by speaking Spanglish. The fact that it just comes out naturally, too, because you're, if you're bilingual and bicultural, and you're not a purist of the language, I'll get to that right now, actually, <laughs> you do that. And then there's a lot of ethnic pride. People say, we've been talking about this at this conference for a long time, at least a decade now. The 200 percenters, we were talking about these Gen Z Latinos 10 years ago when they were 10 years old, when they were children. And they are the 200 percenters. And we've heard this many times. I am 100% American. I'm 100% Latina. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be Latina. My, I have two daughters in this cohort, uh, this age. I remember once my oldest daughter comes from middle school in a new school. And uh, people, you know, she doesn't look Latina. The other one does. And so she, you know, people just, oh, new kid, new girl. Her name is, OK, there's another Latino name. Then they saw the last name, and somebody said, oh, that, that's Spanish. Are you, are you Mexican? No, no, my dad's from Argentina. Oh, you're Latina. Yeah, cool. She comes home and says, hey, dad, guess what? It's cool to be Latina. I love that because if you go back a few generations, people were ashamed. They, kids would say, tell their parents, please don't speak Spanish to me in public. You know, uh, we need to speak English. And so things totally got reversed. And this generation appreciates diversity, wants diversity, wants authenticity in so many ways. This is another finding, and this is what they did. They focused on ages 18 to 34. They found that they prefer Spanglish, for the most part, in most domains. A word about the Spanish language. We still need Spanish media. If you look at the segmentations by language preference and language dominance, Spanish dominant Latinos are still a segment. The ones who are not very fluent in English don't do Spanglish, because you need that fluency, bilingual, bicultural. Many Spanish-dominant Latinos are not very acculturated to US culture. They are not very fluent in English, and they stay in Spanish. They can do English, too. They understand some things in English, but they don't do Spanglish. And you reach them best with Spanish media, Spanish print media, Spanish language radio, Spanish TV. There is a, still a case for that. We're not saying that, don't do that. What we want to do today is really break the mold of, oh, are they English dominant or Spanish dominant? Shall we do English or Spanish? 
I've done Spanglish pieces too, uh, you know, uh, bilingual pieces, English and Spanish. That's not Spanglish, by the way, that's bilingual. You can have a brochure, a mailer, a, a, a print ad that has English and Spanish in it, plenty of examples, and that's fine. But uh, the second part that you have here, English or Espanol. You speak 100% English or 100% Espanol because Spanglish is wrong, is an aberration, is terrible, and remember that classism comment, class, social class, is for uneducated people. In Latin America, that's huge. And so if you're an, if you're an educated Latin American, you did college back home, I did some in Argentina, I also did college and higher education in the US, but even people who did high school and came to study in college here, they are Latin Americans from whatever in Latin America, educated, middle class, upper middle class, they tend to look down on Spanglish a lot of times, and uh, there's a class element in that looking down. So, as we saw, I'm going to go back quickly to uh, the, what they think of Spanglish. The attitudes, the majority say it's good. A lot of people are neutral. About 10% are, oh yeah, there are good things and bad things. What are the bad things? Oh, the bad things are the next group. The 7% of Gen Z Latinos in the US, Latinas, who <coughs> think, have neg a negative attitude about Spanglish. And 1% is neutral, no comment. A lot of times that comment, that was, what do you mean? if I like it or not like it, or good or bad, it is, Spanglish is there, I mean, that's it, you know, it's like, what do you think about cars? Oh, cars, yeah, yeah. They cause accidents, they kill people, they also get us places, cars, 1%, <laughs> neutral, no comments. So, let's move on, move on, move on to the cultural influence. These two next slides are arguably the most important in the whole presentation here. Latinos, bilingual Latinos in the US, have such cultural influence. They're influencing their peers. Part of it is that they are 50% in California. Now, you go to the three main media markets, San Diego, LA, Bay Area, San Francisco, a lot more. Texas, 48% overall. Go to the big cities, go to Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, you get a lot more. Uh, Florida, that percentage, Go to Miami or even Orlando, and you'll have a much higher number. So the percentage of millennials are Latino, Latina. Chicago, 24%. Well, Illinois, 24%. Chicago is a lot higher. Same thing with New York City. You could put a C there. Overall, in the state of New York, is 22%. In New York City, is a lot higher. So, my le uh, my le I keep going talking about millennials. Gen Z Latinos are so much a majority. If you look at a, a professional, let's say a copywriter, 25-year-old copywriter, 30-year-old copywriter in a Minneapolis agency, and they're hanging out after work or you know, in a tall table, five people, chances are they're all white in Minneapolis. Maybe there is one minority person, maybe African-American, maybe Latino, potentially maybe also Asian. There's a group locally that wants to change the face and voice of advertising and marketing, Brand Lab, because we have so little uh, representation. You go to LA and all these cities, and that table of five is two Latinos, one Asian, one African American, one white person. So if you're a white person, a white 25, 30 year old, your peers are, you live in a multicultural setting. And that is the difference. And then let's move on to what they found and what they conclude in some ways. The majority of residents in those major cities which command a lot of influence in pop culture nationwide are affecting their peers of other ethnicities. So that means, and they are actually, this is a different research that found that a lot of non-Latinos, non-Hispanics understand a lot of Spanglish. This is what we've been talking for a long time, the Latinization of America. By virtue of being in the US, you are exposed to Latin culture more and more. Latin culture in food, in, in, in pop culture in general, in music, even in the language. There are many types of Spanglish, if you ask people, and yes, there's New Rican, 
in Nueva York, there's New Rican, and uh, Puerto Rican is a great version of Spanglish. There I say the word neutral. There is a way that this uh, Spanglish that you can actually speak and understand and use that, that covers all of them. So what are the ways to do Spanish? The technical wording from cultural anthropology is code switching. Code switching is when we switch, we switch communication or, or cultural modes. It doesn't have to be linguistic, verbal, it could be attitude. In this case, we're talking about a linguistic, linguistic code switching. That's what's happening. Bilingual, bicultural, you can switch codes fairly easily once you do that. Cognates and false cognates. Cognates is a word, are two words in two languages that look the same. Sometimes they sound the same when you pronounce them. In Spanish, maybe they don't sound the same, but you can say concentration, concentración, solution, solución. You see them in writing, they're almost identical. That, those are cognates. And false cognates are the words that look the same, but don't mean the same thing. The classic example, of course, embarrassed, embarazada, embarazado. That means pregnant in Spanish. <laughs> so uh, that happened a lot in Latin America over the years. There was a case of a nun who said, oh, estoy tan embarazada. I'm so pregnant. And everybody's like, oh, Sor Maria, por favor. So that, that, that is part of the Spanish language. People mix that. Loan words, when you borrow a word and, and a phrase or a structure from one language to the other, that happens a lot in Spanish as well. And most, Spanglish is mostly spoken, it's a verbal thing. Although, it is in writing when it comes to social media or in messaging, there's a lot of that, I've seen a lot of that. And, and usually it's not good Spanish. There's a classic thing that I see in Lat among Latinos, in Latin America especially, but anywhere, uh, 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 during the holiday season, is Santa saying, I've seen your social media this year. For, for Christmas this year, you're getting a dictionary <laughs> because people misspell things horribly. Spanglish has some of those things, but not, not too much. Efficiency, okay, this is where we get into uh, some examples. Spanglish is efficient, and efficiency is one reason why many people say, oh, I speak Spanglish. I say, se me loqueó la troca en el parqueo. Se me loqueó la troca en el parqueo, what does that mean? I locked my keys inside my truck in the parking lot. That's too long. In Spanish, parqueo, okay, let's count. Parqueo, parqueo, o oh, parqueo, parqueo. Estacionamiento, six syllables. That's, a, that's parking lot or parking in English. It's too long. We don't have time for that. We're busy, so efficient. Se me lo la troca en el parqueo. Move on. Look at this one. No es justo. You told me you would give it to me. Me lo prometiste. Kind of flows nice and people speak that way. We don't, we, the, the things that come out. But think of this, when you do bilingual copy, or Spanglish even, and, and I've, I've taught that to my clients, I've written some guides, you want to maybe focus benefits in Spanish, features in English, features and benefits because Spanish is the language of the heart. You want to tell the benefits, what, what will be good for them in Spanish, and then tell them how to buy the details, the data, to the mind. You speak to the mind, speak to the heart. This comes out, people don't think, okay, what shall I say? They just say, no es justo, it's in, it is unfair, speaking to the heart. You told me you would give it to me, you remember, right? I'm, I'm talking to the mind in English, and then the guilt straight to the heart. Me lo prometiste. You promised it to me. So this is one way to break down how Spanglish, and, and the reasons why it may be more effective than if I say the whole thing in Spanish or the whole thing in English. This is a quick glossary, and uh, it shows how wrong Spanglish is, because aplicar, aplicar really means to apply sunscreen. Now the summer is coming, it's raining today, but aplicar. But to apply for a job, hay que aplicar ese trabajo. It's used that way. Aseguranza, for insurance. We say seguro. Seguro is the right word. But if you're doing search marketing, you better, better put the word aseguranza there. 
because a lot of people are not going to say, you know, uh, cheap, seguro, seguro de carro, seguro de... They're going to say aseguranza. They're going to type that. So in search marketing and things like that, you add a lot of these words, even though it's not proper Spanish. It's what the market uses a lot of times. Los viles. Bills, sorry. Bills. Bills. Los viles would be the, 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 las cuentas, los gastos, well, facturas. Introducir. Introducir is to insert in Spanish. But hey, I'm going to introduce you to a friend. Te voy a introducir un amigo, a una amiga. Introducir. Another word. It's a, again, another cognate that is not, it means it looks the same, so it's, people use it. Lonche. Vamos a lonche. Vamos a lonchar. That's very common. Vamos al mall. El mall of America. Rufero. I have friends who are ruferos who have nice trocas. And this is very common, you know. There are, there are words in Spanish for roofer, you know, techo, techista, whatever. Eh, troca, camioneta. No, we just say troca. People say troca. So this is something, again, and it's an actual quote. I forgot to put the, the quotes in there. Yo hago todo en el teléfono. Me gusta chatear, postear, tuitear, whatsappear, facebookear, scrollear y likear. Talking about borrowing, borrowing. And of course, the purists of the language, oh no, we have words for that. How dare you say that? Ah, you don't like it? Tengo que vacunar la carpeta. And then another one. Mi gatito made a mess en la carpeta. Si, sí, made a mess. Flows better in English. Tengo que vacunar la carpeta. Let me translate that properly. I'm a certified translator too, besides being a copywriter. And so, Tengo que vacunar la carpeta means I have to vaccinate the folder. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah, me too. Vacunar, vacuum. Carpeta, carpet. That's it. They're false cognates. We use them, people use them, and they say that. Tengo que vacunar mi gatito, mira mes en la carpeta. The rug, the carpet. In pop culture, here we go. Rick asked me to sing this. I'm not going to sing it. Despacito, this is how we do it down in Puerto Rico. I just want to hear you screaming, ay bendito. I can move together cuando esté contigo. Cuando estoy contigo, I think it is. It just flows. If you want to practice Spanglish, listen to reggaeton. <laughs> and uh, now, retro. If you remember this, you are dating yourself. Remember, living la vida loca, that was totally Spanglish. Here's from pop culture, here's an influencer, a singer, has an album, I think. I'm with my litas playing the rosario. I mean, my, my abuelitas, my grandmothers playing the rosary, of course. This is a Latina, 25 year old, born in Latin America, came as a little child. She's Latina in the US, she's Gen Z, and she goes back home. Back home could be Mexico, Honduras, Puerto, anywhere in Latin America, where everybody speaks 100% Spanish. And she speaks Spanglish. Yeah, more, he's educated in English. English dominant, of course, but she can hold her own in Spanish. Mis amigas back home dicen que yo hablo en regatón. That's what she said. My friends back home tell me I speak in regatón because that's the way she speaks. She speaks Spanish, pepper things in English. Sounds like a regatón song when she talks. People love her. She's happy because, because oh, you're so cool the way you speak. Muy cool, muy cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's look at another phrase. By the way, dame su número, brother. Quiero que me dé un chance. Oh my God, tienes un crush con ella. Te voy a introducir a otra amiga. Okay, te llamo para atrás. This is full of Spanglish. A little back and forth between two guys. By the way, you know what that means. By the way, give me her number, please. I want her to give me a chance. Oh my God, you know what that means. <laughs> Tienes un crush, you have a crush on her. I'm going to introduce you to another friend, another girl maybe that will break your spell. Okay, I'll call you back. Te llamo para atrás. <laughs> this is very common. Two guys, you know, of course in their 20s, they're dating, in the dating game and so on. Here are a few loose phrases. Casi me vio el guachimán. Te lo advierto for the last time. The watchman, 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 security guard. The security guard almost saw me, first one. Te lo advierto for the last time. I warn you for the last time. Ese perrito es tan cute, the little dog, so cute. 
un look muy cool, brother, o muy dark. Somebody dressed, or, well, me, this is it. I said, hey, I, I'm, I have a black guayabera. No, guayabera needs to be white. No, black. Oh, it's a look, un look muy cool, brother, or muy, muy dark. Kind of like the, the goth version of guayaberas. <laughs> Oye, pero, tell me something. ¿Qué pasó con María the other day? Ese Carlos le parece medio creepy. La estaba stalkeando en Facebook. Ooh, whoa. Okay, tell me something. What happened with Maria the other day? Oh, that guy, Carlos guy, he's kind of creepy. He was talking her on Facebook. There we go. Let's keep moving. Ah, this is a couple, a couple, classic couple situation when money is tight and thing, you know. Tú siempre vas de shopping y quién paga los biles y para colmo subió la seguridad. Vas a tener que aplicar en Get a Job porque ya no llega el stimulus check, mi amor. Uh, all right. I think all of you understand what I mean. I don't have to translate it. It's, it's money. It's money issues and uh, they need a, a psychologist or a financial planner to help them out. Fui al store de la esquina to get some fruit, pero ya estaban sold out. You know, the little corner store where they have fruit, but they don't want to have fruit at the end of the day. So by mid-afternoon, it's all gone. Well, he went too late. They were sold out. Natural, very, very clear Spanglish. La vi en la librería del colegio. Luego vine la marqueta, tuve que parquear la troca dos cuadras y se me loqueó la troca. He locked his keys inside the truck again. Oh, boy. La vi en la librería del colegio. This is uh, interesting Spanglish. is again using false cognates, false friends, people call them. Librería is bookstore in proper Spanish. But sounds like library, so hey, it's library too. Colegio in Latin America tends to be a high school. But we're talking about the community colleges in California, and colegio comunitario, colegio. So we're talking about, of course, I saw her at the college bookstore. Eh, I mean, not bookstore, sorry. College library, librería del colegio. Straight, everybody understands that right away. Luego vino la marqueta, the market, and I had to park the truck two blocks away, and I locked my keys inside the truck again. One more here for Rick Aguilar. I'm into politics. Voy a correr para gobernador, Rick. Voy a correr para gobernador. In Spanish, correr is literally run. I would say, voy a postularme para gobernador. You know, there are so many other ways to say it, but hey, we know. Run for governor. We're bilingual, bicultural. Correr para gobernador is run for governor. Easy. And I'm going to move on because I, need, I have a campaign to run. Sweet tea, only one dollar. Muy frío. These are actual advertising situations. Artisan is how this app rolls. Su secreto es la salsita Big Mac. Some kind of a fast food outfit has that. 23 sabores blended into one extraordinary taste. Some kind of pop. Experience sabor that's fresh and crisp. This is a lot of advertising played very safe that way. Para celebrar los goles y los touchdowns. This speaks of the bilingual nature and bicultural. Gen Z Latinos and Latinas love soccer, but they also love, love, love football and basketball and uh, other sports. This is from an actual ad. Teenage girl comes home. Hola a todos. I got my first paycheck today. We celebremos. Bilingual home. This is an actual ad too. Auto insurance. Faster than a flying chancla. <laughs> this is full of culture. I don't have time here. I only have half hour. Google chancla. Google la palabra Chancla, see what happens. Oh, it's just full of culture here. Chancla is a, is a flip-flop that grandma or, or mom throws at you when you do something wrong. <laughs> Faster than a flying chancla. Oh, it's just full of meaning and humor and... Okay. Tu pediste, you got it. The latest and coolest teléfonos por tu dinero. Get más de tu compañía celular. The camp, this went on and on, and you know, the, the Spanglish that advertisers use sometimes is not quite the flow that really a lot of these native bilingual people, Spanglish people, they speak Spanglish as a native language. 
Uh, it doesn't always work. You have to do it right. This, uh, this has a, this a way to, a wrong way to speak Spanish, which is kind of fakey and it doesn't quite work, even though you're mixing the two languages. This is from the news. This newsman, this newscaster is a guy. He did the news in English, and then the camera changed. The, he also he's bilingual, and he also does the Spanish uh, news. Para, van, a ver, van a ver el video de surveillance para encontrar al responsable. He couldn't think video de seguridad, but every other understands, and everybody understands video de sur surveillance. What, these are the native, this is a three-year-old playing, a little girl playing with things. We're going to have uno a la time. Vamos a poner todo back together again. Aquí está, the last one. This is her, talking to herself, speaking while playing. This is how Spanglish People grew up with it. It's effective, direct, concise, fun, and just to wrap it up, cultural identity. Spanglish is familia, raíces, cultura. Como identificas con tu gente, tu people? The cultural pride. We live in the hyphen. Google that. In the hyphen is a thing. We live in the hyphen that connects American and Latin culture. And the cultural pride. We're not doing the crossover. We are the crossover. I love that. So this is a... Uh, a quick intro to Spanglish and Gen Z, their primary language. Thank you. Muy cool, brother. Muy cool, muy cool. <laughs> That's you. a real sign. That's a real sign from the Calle Ocho. <laughs> Is it? It's a real sign. No parking in este driveway. Yarda sale. Chivos for sale. Real signs. Regrese aquí los shopping carts. Se habla español most of the time. All right. Here it is, so, brother. Rico, Thank you. Thank you.